Hello, my name is Mark and welcome to I'm Organic Gardening on this beautiful fall day. And welcome to fall or autumn, whatever you want to call it. Uh, in a couple of weeks, we're going to have some changing of leaves. Our leaves are going to be falling down shortly that we can collect, hopefully, and bring them to our garden as organic matter. But today I want to talk to you about the squash behind me. I planted this 40 days ago and it's doing superbly well for the time that I planted it into a warm environment. Extremely hot degrees, about 95 during the day and about 70 degrees tonight at nighttime Fahrenheit now what's doing very well is that we have fruit production already in 40 days or less and it's good time I want to get out here and harvest it and bring it inside so I can eat it and also too we have plenty of time now that we can still uh, let's say a good 20 days before we get our first frost state or even hopefully longer so I can get more production out of the squash so it is possible to plant squash I planted this in on August 16th of this year and now today is September 24th so things are going extremely well and I'll give you a close-up of all the squash that I planted and how it's fruiting and the blossoms are on it. We have a couple insect damage to it, which I'll go over in another video. I don't want to pull it up and damage the plant right now because I want it still to be good for production. So let's take a closer look inside these zucchinis and squashes that we have here. And it's again, you'll be surprised. This is only 40 days later, like I said before. And it's just, you can do it. It's possible and you don't have to give up on your squash and anything else either. I love to eat squash and all the different varieties that are out there. It's super healthy for you. It's full of minerals and also lots of moisture that your body needs. And again, just enjoy watching them grow. I direct seeded these right into the ground, like it says on August 16th, and again, they're doing just amazingly well. So, without ado, let's get right into it and see how close we can get to those squashes to show you how well they're doing. We have some beautiful yellow squash that we'll start out first with. We have 10 plants growing here, and they're just gorgeous. You can see that we have multiple stems and flowers, both male and female, because you need both a male flower and a female flower to get pollinated. And I want to give a big shout out to our friendly bees that are doing a great job so far this year uh, and still continue to do it to produce this beautiful yellow squash. So that's another answer. In August, September, our bees are still out there working and as busy as bees do and providing a beautiful pollination effort to keep our squash production up. And here's a better look at all those 10 plants right down the line here. Some are large, some are small, and that's all due to those warm temperatures that we get every so often, and it will give an uneven, let's say, um, production towards squash later in the season. And here we have a beautiful squash, perfect size. I'm gonna say it's about a little over an inch in diameter and about, say, four to five inches long. Plus we have all inside here, all new pollinator ready uh, squash to be going in production later on and just beautiful. Now look at all the blooms that we have here on a different plant and you can see that we have one squash already here and this is your female of course with the fruit on it and then we have our male flower here also too but all this in here is doing very well. And again, we have at least a good another 20 days. So this can come our production. As if you've grown squash before, and if you haven't, let's say the fruit sets very quickly and grows very quickly, especially in warmer temperatures. Now, and you can see that happening by just going out in your garden every two or three days. Something like this here, this one here that's kind of on the small side, I would say probably in less than four days, that will almost double or triple in size and ready for harvesting. Now here we have some beautiful green zucchini. Oh, such delicious. There's so many recipes I can recommend doing, but you can see here how nice that this is. Just amazing. So. We're gonna enjoy that also too in a few days. Uh, again, I just love this stuff. It is just so good for your body and it just is a great taste of summer still. And right next to that other green zucchini, we have another one down here below and another plant right next to it and it's doing well. So our next variety here is a miniature patty pan called Yellow Sun. Now you can see here that's doing 
very well in this cluster of high dense foliage here. Now the reason why there's a lot of foliage is because it produces lots of these little miniature patty pans and the time to harvest them is actually quite about right now when the flower is still on there. They are just delicious in the morning. Uh, there's again I just slightly steam them so it's a little on the soft side. Add some tomato salsa that is homemade for myself as a little side dish. I throw three or four on a plate with some salsa, homemade salsa, in the morning with my omelet. Oh, just to die for. Good stuff. Nice side view of that plant. We're gonna open this up so you can see there. You can see how dense that foliage is in there. And now I have two miniature patty pans down there and we have one down below that is just about ready to harvest. I'll come out in another day or so. Actually, I might just pick this and show you. Let me just do that. Now you can see this beautiful miniature patty pan. It's a teacup size. You can actually harvest it with the flower still on it. You eat the whole thing. They're just delicious. And they'll have a green stem down here where my fingers are. And they don't get much bigger than this. They just enjoy being a small miniature delicate size for you to eat. It's almost like eating a little uh, squash candy in the morning. They're just great to have. The variety is called Lemon Sun. Here's something awesome I want you to see. See how many of them are on just one stem. And there's like, say, three or four stems that come out of this main plant here, which is about just one seed planted here. But you can see on this main stem how many of those little miniature patty pans are actually forming below there. Just awesome. You'll probably get anywhere from maybe uh, at least a dozen per plant or more. And they are just a prolific grower just beautiful in size. Last but not least, our last variety is called Yellow Star, and it's a beautiful large patty pan, and it makes a nice compact size plant that we can see here. This is just from one seed, and let's push a couple leaves out of the way, and you can see how large that Y Star patty pan is, and Y Star is the variety name of this squash. If I move the foliage out of the way, you can see how beautiful and large that this Y-Star patty pan is. I'm gonna say it's about the size of my hand. We have another one down here, just doing awesome for our full harvest. Just gorgeous. So if you ever consider about planting fall squash again, let's say planting date around August 15th or 16th, and preparing your soil ahead of time, you can get these beautiful plants and beautiful harvests from all different varieties that you want to plant. Now all these varieties, they say on the package they're expected to take at least 50 days, and we're only at 40 days right now. So you can see that you can get a nice production of planting a full crop of these beautiful summer squash. I want to thank you so much for watching, but also I want to include in this before you leave is that fall is a great time for collecting our leaves, our wood chips, and hopefully you can get them. If you can't get any other items like your coffee grounds, save your grass clippings, um, start growing some perennial plants this fall, I'm going to be going all over this in the next month. Fall is the best time to rejuvenate your garden. There's so many beautiful things you can do right now for building soil. And the biggest thing is, if you can't get any of these items, you also have the possibility of cover crop. Cover cropping is probably the best way to build soil. Building soil is not just adding things into it. It has to be grown by nature. And what it does, it forms something like an aggregate. You take your sand, silt, and clay, mash them together, and then the fungi go in between them and they build a soil aggregate. And that aggregate stays that way. So inside the palm of my hand can collect water and hold water. And that's what you want in your soil. Your sand, silt, and clay to hold water and keep those microbes alive. Soil is all about microbes. I didn't fertilize any of these plants with anything else except microbes in the garden. And one of these days I'm going to make a t-shirt and maybe you can help me is what should I put on that t-shirt because YouTube is asking me to uh, sell t-shirts now and 
we just have to get the word out there what is the best way uh, micro soil microbes are the best uh, gardening with microbes is great something like that I don't know I haven't thought about it yet I just started I just got an email this morning so there's something in there that maybe you can come up with that is catchy like one or two words long or three words long and we can basically go out there and show people that soil is a living part of this planet and it's also and all this down here now I'm savoring over the taste of the squash already but it's what is about it is that I don't have to eat a lot about it and you know I've lost over 90 pounds in the last year or so and that is to eat healthy nutrient dense plants that I grow on my farm here and I share with other by selling them to them too so it's it does work it does take time but it is organic and there's some beautiful ways to do that and enjoy life so god bless i'll see you again shortly with another video again this month i'm going to try to put at least uh, two or three videos out per week weather pending i wish i could always do this but for the last two weeks we had just again foggy days and i don't want to ruin my camera so <laughs> we'll, we'll keep in touch and again have a blessed day and i'll talk to you again shortly thanks for watching and happy gardening